The story of fire. A Sufi story. It was back in the old days, when humans did not know how to make fire. There lived a man, let's call him Noor. He was pretty sharp. One day he was sitting there, thinking about nature and how it works, when all of a sudden he found out how to make fire by rubbing two sticks together. And you have to understand, this was a huge deal. Because at that time, nobody knew how to make fire. Sure, lots of people had seen fire, like when lightning struck, and the woods went up in flames. But nobody could make it for themselves. To the people, fire was just a terrifying force of nature, and something that had been best avoided. So when this man knew figured out how to make fire on its own, it was a great discovery. Noor said to himself, Fire-making can be of great use to people. I want to share my knowledge with others so that their life could be more comfortable. I want to teach the people how to make fire so that they can warm themselves in the cold nights. So he went traveling around from one tribe to the other, trying to teach them how to make fire. Noor passed the secret to many groups of people. His efforts were met with mixed results. Some people took advantage of the knowledge. They saw that this new invention could be very useful and eagerly learned how to make fire for themselves. Others drove him away thinking that he must be dangerous before they had had time to understand how valuable this discovery would be to them. Other people, when they saw what Noor was doing with his fire-making sticks, couldn't get past the fact that fire was really dangerous. They said, Fire! Bad! And they chased him out of the town. Then they breathed a huge sigh of relief and said, How close we have been to death to death! And they went on being cold all the time and eating their food raw, just like they had always done. Still, Noor continued going from place to place, doing his fire-making demonstration for everybody who would listen. But one day, he came across a tribe of people who were so freaked out and panic-stricken by what he was doing that they shouted, He's a dead man! He wants to burn our language, our village! Kill him! And they fell about him and tore him into pieces, limp by limp. Oh, and then they breathed a big sigh of relief. <gasps> How good that we have killed this demon that has come into our village to burn it down. None of them really thought too hard about how strange it was that for a demon he really hadn't put up a very impressive fight. And they all went right on being cold and eating their food raw. But now at night, when they were all sitting around in the darkness, hardly to guess for warmth, they would tell the tale of Once long ago, a demon came into our village, but luckily our brave forefathers killed him. It was their favorite story, and they told it over and over again. All the different people that Noor had visited in his travel over generations, they all retained the story of the man who had come to their village long ago. 
Yet, they all told the story in different ways, depending what their ancestors had done with the knowledge of fire-making that Noor had shown them. Centuries passed. In the first tribe, which had learned about fire, the priests kept the secret for themselves. They said to the ignorant people, Fire is a gift of God. It should only be started with the help of the priests. They knew that if anyone could make fire by himself, no one would need the priests. So they kept the secret of fire-making to themselves and used it to keep control over the tribe. And as long as they were the only ones who could make fire, people needed the priests. Then the priests would be well fed, while the common people all froze. In the second tribe, the people had forgotten how to make fire and worshipped instead the sticks. But the story of the wise men who had come to them and performed miracles was very important to them. So they set up shrines that contained the two sticks for fire-making, and three times a day they would stop what they were doing and bow down to the sacred sticks for fire-making, without the foggiest idea what these sticks were used for what the original meaning was. The third tribe worshipped an image of Nur. All bowed, bowed down before the statue of Nur because it was he who had taught them how to make that strange thing fire. But they never did it. The fourth tribe still told stories about this man who had come and to who showed them the secret of fire-making. But they had never really gotten the knack for performing these miracles for themselves, so it had become a legend. Nobody was sure if it really happened once, or if it was a metaphor of some hidden truths, or just a fairy tale. Some believed the story, some did not. They argued about it as a question of faith, but in spite of all their debate, nobody ever figured out how to make fire on their own. And there was a fifth tribe, where the people did get the knack for making fire on their own. And they used it to cook food, warm the houses, and to make all kinds of useful things, like melting iron. Centuries passed. Then one day a wise man and his disciples began a journey through all the lands that Nur had long ago visited, when he was giving his fire-making demonstrations. The disciples were amazed at the variety of rituals which they encountered. After carefully observing the local customs and practices, and they said to their teacher, Master, all the ceremonies and rituals, all the stories these people told us, are all related in one way or another to the making of fire. But in their ignorance, they don't make use of this knowledge. We should teach these ignorant people. The master said, All right, since you are so keen on bringing knowledge to these ignorant people, let us start our journey again. Let's see what happens. By the time we reach the end of the journey, those of you who survive will have a better understanding of the real problem. The disciples were astonished. 
Master, what do you mean by those of us who survive? The master said, let us start the journey again and you will understand. So they went back to the beginning of their journey. When they reached the first tribe, the group was received friendly by the tribesmen. The priest said, come, we invite you to our sacred fire ceremony. The priests were doing a lot of hocus-pocus. They were dancing wildly, jumping up and down and calling out to the heavens. <sighs> and then the final, finally, smoke appeared on the altar and then the flame licked up like a red snake. Seeing the miracle, the crowd went completely nuts. After witnessing this, the master asked, his disciples. Disciples, does some one of you want to say something? One of the disciples said, In the cause of truth, I feel compelled to say something to these people. These people are being fooled by the priests, who have convinced them that they have a special contact with God just because they know how to rub two sticks together. We have to tell these people the truth. The master said, I have the feeling that may not be such a great idea, but if you really want to change these people, go ahead. But do so at your own risk. And so the idealistic young man stepped forward and said to the crowd, and the tribal chiefs and the priests, You believe that fire-making is a special manifestation of divine power, but I too can make fire. If I form this miracle, will you admit that your belief have been false for so many years? Upon hearing this, the priest cried, God, arrest him. He is an enemy of our belief. The gods dragged the idealistic young man away, and he was never seen again. The rest of the crop said some hasty goodbye and hurried away. The travelers went to the next territory where the second tribe were, where the people prayed to the shrine with the fire-making sticks. One of the disciples, who also happened to be a very fast runner, asked his master, Master, please give me your permission to bring these people to reason. I want to show them what the use of these sticks really is. The master told him, if you feel compelled to do so, do it. So the disciples spoke to the people, but was also careful to keep a clear path for himself to run away in case things started to take an ugly turn. He said, people, I speak to you as reasonable people. What you are worshipping are just the tools with which you could do something useful. But the knowledge of how to use these tools is lost to you. Thus you are missing its usefulness. Astonished people asked with open mouths, What kind of knowledge? The disciple bravely continued, If you allow me, I can show you the truth that lies behind your riches. This knowledge will be very useful. Now these people were more reasonable than the first tribe had been. They didn't kill his this newcomer as soon as those words were out of his mouth. One of the oldest and most respected men among them stepped forward and said, You are strangers. And we have shown you hospitality because that is our custom. But a stranger, foreign to our customs, you cannot understand what we are doing. 
We pray to the sacred sticks three times a day. That shows that we take our religion seriously. The young man said, <laughs> Well, I... The old man, you don't know anything about our sacred traditions. And yet you want to tell us the true meaning behind our rituals? How dare you? The young man stammered. It's just that I... Uh, perhaps even you are trying to take away or alter our holy religion. We therefore decline to listen to you. You would better be on your way. The group left the place in a hut. The travelers moved on. When they arrived in the land of the third tribe, they found in front of each house an idol representing Nu, the original fire maker. The people bowed down to the stages and laid garlands of flowers at their feet and asked them for advice in all kinds of matters. Seeing this, one of the disciples asked the master for permission to speak. The master just nodded. So the third people spoke to the people. Now look, let's be clear on one thing. I don't want to hurt your religious feelings, but this idol represents a man, Noor, who taught a skill which can be very useful. This man, Noor, had not only a sharp mind, he was also a generous man, devoting his life to bring the gift of fire to all the people. But they didn't appreciate what he was trying to teach them. The priests interrupted. He was not a man. He was a god. Our god. <laughs> the disciple. Yes, well, that be that it may be. The reason he was a specialist is because he brought fire to the people. And the reason fire is special, the priest replied, the reason he was special is because he was a god, the disciple continued desperately. And the reason fire is special is because it is useful. And if you will permit me, I will demonstrate it to you using these simple tools you are worshipping. The chief priest said with an icy voice, this may be so, but to understand the real secret, this is only possible for the few who are initiated. <laughs> the disciple, there is no secret. Just accept certain facts. If you rub two sticks, fire will be produced. The priest became angry. This is the worst here, you see, and for a man who does not even speak our language correctly, Stranger, stranger, you are not a priest or a follower of our face. And yet to dare you dare to tell us that you know more about God than we do? We who have devoted our lives to knowing his ways. And his bloodshot eyes stared at the disciples. The disciples said to the group, Maybe we better leave. But the whole group was driven out of the village. The group continued its journey and arrived in the land of the fourth tribe that has preserved only the story of the fire making. Now a fourth disciple stepped forward and spoke to the people. The story of making fire is true. And I know how fire can be done. Confusion broke out within the tribe, which split into various fractions. Some said, this may be true. And if it is true, we want to find out how to make fire. But there was another fraction who said, of course the story is not true. This man is just trying to fool us. So the group decided to split up into small groups and then report back what they had found. 
When the grubs returned, the master asked each of them in turn, Now tell me what you have found. The first group said, Well, they are all familiar with the story of the man who made fire, but most of the people don't believe that it really happened. To them, it is just a legend. Only people who are more or less lunatics believe that the story is true. But I, I have my doubts if any of those believers could have learned to make fire, even if I showed them how. The disciple of another group said, We met other people who probably would have been able to master the art of fire making, if I had showed them how. The master, stroking his beard, thoughtfully asked, And why didn't you? The disciple, I questioned their motives. I found that most of them were greedy people who wanted to possess the secret of fire making for personal advantage. They didn't want to share this knowledge for the progress of the whole tribe. One fellow I asked seemed really excited about learning the method of making fire. And when I asked him what he planned to do with his precious gift, he just said, I would make them all pay for it. That's why. The master asked another group of his disciples, And what were your experiences? A disciple of the third group said, I talked to one of the foremost religious sages who seemed to be quite sane. He said to me, the mystery of the fire making is the axis around which our entire face spins. We prefer the legend as it is, for this belief unites our tribe. If we abandon it and we find out that this new interpretation is useless, what will become of our community then? Because nobody can prove that making fire is possible. It demands faith, deep faith. Therefore, to even try to settle the question one way or the other would destroy the very foundations of our belief, which rests on faith and not on doubt. For only the doubter demands proof. Listening to him gave me a headache, so I left. The master asked the last group of his disciples, What do you? The disciple said, When I told the people that the story of Nur is not a legion, that I myself can make fire, they shouted at me, Ah, you are but an oily salesman. <laughs> the master said with a smile, <laughs> Interesting. The group continued its journey. When they came to the tribe who had killed Nur, they saw the ritual reenactment of the slaying of the fire demon, they all agreed to move on very quickly until they reached the lands of the fifth tribe where everybody could make fire. They came to a little town that showed all signs of civilization and prosperity. The group wanted to inquire about the native customs regarding fire making. On the street, one of the disciples approached the man and asked, Excuse me, sir, um, what do you know about the making of fire? The man pulled out the lighter, lit it up and asked, You want to see it again? The group agreed that they had nothing to teach these people. They knew how to make and to use fire. Then the master gathered the disciples around him and told them, I hope you have all learned something. It is not enough to know a thing. 
You have also to know how to teach it. For most people don't want to be taught. So first you have to teach them that there is still something to learn. Then teach them how to learn. Sure, people will tell you that they want to learn. But what they really want is to be taught things that confirm what they already think they know. Which is the same as not wanting to learn anything at all. So only when you know these things can you devise a way to teach. Otherwise, you can have all the knowledge in the world and you may as well be telling it to a boy. Knowledge without a special capacity to teach can even be dangerous.